At its first showing at the World's Fair in 1937, the German delegation said it was a collection of body parts a four-year-old could have painted. Since then, it's been called the greatest anti-war painting ever. Guernica, Pablo Picasso. Picasso's masterpiece was painted as one of Spain's entries for the World's Fair in 1937. It was completed in just 35 days following the indiscriminate bombing of the Spanish, Basque, city of Guernica only weeks earlier. What is going on? It's chaos, not just the subject matter but the way it is presented. Lines overlap, forms intertwine, light is harsh and edges are hard. It is all on one plane, right in front of us. There is no perspective, just raw confronting images everywhere you look. There is a horse, a bull, a woman, a dead child, a dead soldier, flames, the fur on the animals looks like newsprint. The whole painting is in black and white, like a newsreel of the time. Women peer at the carnage, unbelieving. One cries to the heavens with her dead child in her hands. One lifts her hands, imploring. The horse is in distress, its tongue like a dagger. All the tongues are like daggers. A decapitated figure sprawls across the front, trampled by the horse. His severed arm holds a broken sword, an ineffective defence against the terror that rained from the sky over several hours on an afternoon in 1937. Screams ricochet around the painting. The light filters through smoke. All is chaotic, barely intelligible. There is no resting point for the eyes, no distinction between focal points. The entire painting is the focal point, and it is impossible to grasp it immediately. Like the victims, our own eyes seek meaning, going restlessly from left to right, to up and down, to light and dark, to left and right again. What is going on? What is happening? Finally, we begin to look in sections. On the left third, a bull is the only male alive in the painting. He stares at us with both eyes, fully front on coldly inviting us to witness the death and destruction. The bull's body is intact and distinct. His horns point to the sky from where the destruction came. A dark, brutal figure, not being moved by any of the action in the painting. This is the brutal regimes of Franco and Hitler, joining forces to practice aerial destruction on this Basque village. Why a bull? Picasso has been painting bulls already for years a symbol of Spain and of masculine power. Below the bull, a woman and child. She screams at the sky, imploring heaven. Her child has been killed and nothing can make it right. To the right of the bull is a barely seen dove. It is dark, almost invisible. It lifts its beak to the sky, screaming. On the right third, another woman with her hands raised to the sky. She is in a burning building. She stares wild-eyed upwards. What is happening is unimaginable. Literally, Guernica is the first city to experience an aerial bombing of this magnitude. Bombs weighing up to a thousand pounds and thousands of smaller incendiaries kill and maim and burn and destroy. In the middle of the painting is a pyramid of light. As we look carefully we see that the light does not start from the electric light bulb. The light bulb is modern. It is technology. Its rays are more like flames than light. It symbolises this new technological terror raining fire from the skies. The light's apex is instead the torchlight held by the ethereal woman looking down on the destruction, the witness to the event, the judgement that must surely come, the witness to the lives lost. We will not forget. We will bear witness. We see. As we travel down this pyramid, we see the startled and distressed horse and another unbelieving woman staring at the skies. For the third time, I use the word unimaginable. The looks on all faces are of uncomprehending horror. Finally, we come to the decapitated, dismembered soldier, the broken sword symbolizing an ineffective defense against such an unstoppable military machine. And then a small ghost-like flower insignificant and lost. Hope? Lost hope? It's hard to know. If you think the painting is shocking, wait until you hear the story. 
Here is an eyewitness account from George Steer, journalist for The Times. Guernica, the most ancient town of the Basques and the centre of their cultural tradition, was completely destroyed yesterday afternoon by insurgent air raiders. The bombardment of this open town far behind the lines occupied precisely three hours and a quarter, during which a powerful fleet of aeroplanes consisting of three types of German planes, Junkers and Heinkel bombers, did not cease unloading on the town bombs weighing from 1,000 pounds downwards and, it is calculated, more than 3,000 two-pounder aluminium incendiary projectiles. The fighters, meanwhile, plunged low from above the centre of the town to machine gun those of the civilian population who had taken refuge in the fields. Franco, the fascist dictator of Spain, had allowed Hitler to undertake a training run of his military machine on the Basque people to test out and train pilots in carpet bombing. The fascist idea of the greater good being served by having authoritarian, ultra-nationalist dictators, forcible suppression of opposition and regimentation of society has resulted in a town, real people, real men, real women and children being seen as expendable to this so-called greater good. In a possibly apocryphal story, a Nazi officer pointed to a photo of the painting and asked Picasso, did you do this? No, said Picasso, you did. Picasso's stark black and white assemblage of grotesque body parts, screaming women, fire and brutal destruction has not been forgotten. It was used to raise money for resistance to Franco and has entered popular culture where it remains. A few years back I stood before this painting for a while in Madrid. A Spanish man, not from the museum, stood next to me. Do you speak English, he said. Uh, yes, I said. Let me tell you about Guernica. For 20 minutes, his voice betraying emotion, he told me this story from 80 years ago. How the leader of his own country had given Hitler permission to try out some bombing runs on his own people. Not forgotten at all. The event was before World War II. Mass bombings of cities had not yet been seen in the world. Guernica's depiction was harder to grasp when it was painted than afterwards when swathes of Europe and the United Kingdom experienced terror from the skies only a few years later. Guernica's inferno of destruction and death hurled the world into dark days that Picasso had already captured in a way that is beyond history, beyond newsreels. It is on the ground reality. Women, children, defences crumbling, blitzkrieg, the military machine, the technological marvels that were turned into instruments of death, cold military precision bombing, hard machines and explosives meeting soft flesh and real people. British art critic Jonathan Jones said Picasso knew exactly what he was doing when he painted Guernica. He was trying to show the truth so viscerally and permanently that it could outsteer the daily lies of the age of dictators. We would be foolish to think the age of dictators was somehow only in the past. Picasso has used symbols and images that are beyond full description, which reach out to us at a level separate to an intellectually understood truth. He reaches down into our guts and he tears at them, willing us to see, to sob, to cry out at this inhuman injustice, this terror inflicted upon us all. See it, he says, never forget. Pablo Picasso, Guernica. Hi, thanks for watching. If you want reactions to more great art, please like, subscribe, and ring that notifications bell. See you next time.